Lord bless everyone, and today's program will be talking about the Holy Spirit. It's important for us to know who is the Holy Spirit, definitely know his godhood and his person. But it's also important, brothers and sisters, to know his names, because in knowing his names, we know his person, because his name and his names shows us his attributes. And let's pray so we could begin this program. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that everything that will be done today let it be for your glory. Let us see your glory today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God. May we see your, your spirit move in a mighty way, Lord God. Break every chain, every bond, every yoke, Lord God. Lord God, save those who need to be saved, Lord God. Lord God, those who are hearing this program, Lord God, if there's someone sick, Lord God, bring them healing. If they need deliverance, Lord God, we pray for their deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's start off with a song.
is the word pneuma and it means breath air wind and breeze and spirit and that is the word that is the name of the third person of the trinity we can see in genesis 1 2 and the earth was formless and empty and darkness over the surface of the deep And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Ruach Elohim was hovering over the waters. Spirit of God. That's one of the names of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. Ruach Elohim. Uh, Ruach Elohim. Spirit of God. The wind of God, the breath of God, the spirit of God. The, this name is a powerful name because it tells us who he is and who he belongs to. 
He is God Himself. Ruach Elohim in the Hebrew is Ruach Elohim, Spirit God. And, and we see Him as the Creator. Job 33, verse 4. What does it say about the Holy Spirit as He is a Creator? We see Job 33. Verse 4 saying the following. I hate it when the pages get stuck sometimes. All right now. Job said this. The Spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, has made me. And the breath, that word again, the Spirit is Ruach again, of the Almighty gives me life. So we see the Spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, and we also see the Ruach of the Almighty. Well, I want to go there and look at the Hebrew there as well. Let's go to Job 33, verse 4 in the Hebrew. Let me find in the Hebrew. Because we see another name for the Holy Spirit there. Um... In Job, when Job says in, in Job 3 verse 4, the Spirit of God, here he doesn't use Ruach Elohim, he uses El Elohim. Um, El, I'm sorry, he uses El Ruach, another name for God, the strong. El means the strong one. So we see El Ruach. The strong one who is the spirit. And we also see the name. Shade. Which means almighty. The Shaddai. Almighty. And we see another name for the Holy Spirit. And that name is. Neshama, Neshama, which also is the name of the Holy Spirit in Hebrew. Shaddai, Neshama, and we see El, Ruach. So those are the two names mentioned there, differently from Genesis 1 verse 2. Genesis 1 um, verse 2 it uses the word the name for the Holy Spirit Ruach Elohim and in Job 33 verse 4 I was expected to see the same name but what I see is El Spirit you know the Holy Spirit is strong because the El means strong one it means God but it means strong one so the Holy Spirit is strong. This is why First John tells us, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is strong, brothers and sisters. When we are weak, he remains strong in us. And he is also Shaddai Nismat which means the almighty spirit, um, the almighty breath of God, the almighty spirit. I, I think here we see the Holy Spirit in his unlimitedness, his all-powerfulness. I think the word that we use for all-powerful is omni. Potentant. Uh, I'm, I'm, he's, he's all powerful. Omni meaning all. all. There's no um, limit to, to Omni. There's no limit to God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very powerful. When you feel without strength, brothers and sisters, know that the Holy Spirit is there to give you that strength that you need. When you feel that you can't no longer, all oh, the Spirit is there for you. 
where we are weak, he remains strong. This is why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because in ourselves, we are weak, we are helpless, but in God, in his spirit, we are, we are strong. This is why in 1 John, um, not 1 John, I think is in Acts, it's in Acts 1. Let me find it. Acts 1. Verse 8, Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Acts 1, verse 8. Why? Because it's not just anyone who is upon us. It's not just anyone who's in us. He's the Ruach Elohim. He is the, he is the Ruach The El Ruach. He is the El Ruach. He is the Shaddai Namat. He is the all powerful, the almighty Spirit of God. It's amazing to know Him. It's amazing to have that experience with Him. We're reading. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1. Who knows humans, the human, if not the spirit? That uh, I mean, I read it in the Greek. Hold on. Um, for what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Again, the Spirit of God is used there. 1 Corinthians 2.11 Here in the Greek, um, we read, <coughs> Numa for Spirit. The Numa to Theo. The, the Spirit of God, the Numa of God, knows God, knows the deep things of God. When we need insight into his word, he is there to give us that insight that we need. He is not just strong in us. He's not just the strong one in us. He is the one also that gives us knowledge of who he is and what he wants from us. And I think we all need that. We all need that in life. We need to know where we're heading. We need to know what God wants from us. Because it's only when we are doing His will and we're in that perfect will of God that we will be feeling complete and lacking nothing. Let's continue with another song. Let's play this song here. in time Yes, he saved this soul of mine His spirit is so divine I'm glad he found me just in time Jesus found me just in time Yes, he saved
God, Jesus found us just in the right timing. I I was about not to do this program, but yeah, I was motivated by my fiance, and thank God I did. In Isaiah chapter 61, we see in verses 1, Isaiah 61, verse 1. Uh, we see in this verse it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Again, we see the Spirit is sovereign. The Spirit is all-powerful. The The... Adonai Ruach, the, the Adonai, um, the Lord Master, Ruach, brothers, sisters, this is the sovereign one, this is the master, this is the one we are accountable to, yes, we are accountable to the Holy Spirit. He is our Lord, or Adonai. He, he never seen him as Lord at times. But guess what? This is the one we are accountable while we are here on the earth. God gave us the Holy Spirit to the Christian to lead him. This is the one person that's in us of the Trinity. That we're mostly involved with in life. When we do our day by day things. Or are we talking to the spirit. Oh spirit lead me in this direction. Because many times when we don't talk to him. And we don't spend that time with him. Brothers and sisters. Uh, we'll be led in the wrong path. When we're choosing what clothes to wear, where to go, uh, we should ask the Spirit. Hey, Spirit, should I go there? Should I dress like this? Hey, Spirit, um, I don't know what to say. Um, Holy Spirit, can you speak for me in this situation? Because there's times that we don't know exactly what to say. And we have to trust in the Adonai Ruach. This is um, Isaiah 61 verse 1 is a prophecy about Jesus. Jesus quoted this prophecy about himself in Luke. And in the other Gospels we, we can see this. It, you can see this in, in Luke 4. Jesus with this prophecy and said this is being fulfilled in me in Luke 4 verses let me go here in Luke 4 verse 18 Jesus quoted this prophecy we can start in verse 17 the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him on rowing it he found the place that's Luke 4 17 where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he had anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent to me to he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for, of the sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogues were fasted on him. They sat down as they preached back then in those days. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So we see Isaiah 61, 1, is fulfilled in Jesus. Yes, it is. The Ruach Adonai, the Sovereign Lord Spirit was upon Jesus 
We can also see this in Isaiah 11. In verse 1, he says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From the roots, a branch will bear fruit. This, this stump of Jesse is Jesus. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Um, if you have your Bible, the word Lord there is all caps. When, when you see in your Bible the word Lord with all capital letters, it stands for YHWH, the name of God. So here we have the Ruach Yahweh or, or the name of God, which is YHWH. Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh, will rest upon him. Jesus truly dependent on the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, for his daily walk. Are you depending on your, on your Holy Spirit? which is the same Holy Spirit. Are you spend depending on the Holy Spirit for your daily walk? We need to, because without Him we're lost. We need to depend on Him. We need to rest surely on Him. He's good. Let's play another song. Fears got me living with the lights out Chained down like a prisoner in my own house Shame cycles like a deadly medication I try but I can't change my situation Cause that liar comes to rob my joy Yeah I'm bruised but I'm not destroyed I'm rising like an army and you're gonna Enemy store. Oh, you can't speak your lies over my family. No, you can't break the promises that I'm standing on. Ain't got a flex to put you back in your place now. My name is all I gotta say. The only reason that
Another name for the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Grace. <clears throat> we can see this in Zechariah 12, verse 10. It says, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. And they will look on me, the one they have pierced. And they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for his firstborn son. <clears throat> Look at what it says. And this is actually what we're supposed to be expecting. We're supposed to be expecting that Holy Spirit of grace to be poured upon the <laughs> The Jews will be receiving that spirit of grace. Right now, it's being poured upon the Gentiles. The Gentiles are receiving that spirit of unmerited favor. This is what grace means. Grace means unmerited favor. You don't deserve grace, but it's given to you. Grace. And, and the Holy Spirit here in Zacharias... 12 verse 10 he's called the spirit of grace um the spirit of unmerited favor brothers and sisters when we get that grace upon us we don't deserve it it's unmerited there's nothing we've done to deserve it all oh, brothers and sisters but god has given it to us yes um Whatever you've lost in the past, it stays in the past. It was like that song says. Well, we take him back what the enemy stole from us. Um, God is good. But it's only by his grace, his unmerited favor, that we could take back the things that the enemy stole from us. Um, what's the difference between grace and mercy? Mercy is not receiving what you deserve. Grace is receiving what you don't deserve. In mercy, <clears throat> I don't get what I <clears throat> deserve. I deserve punishment. I deserve hell. And I don't receive it. But in grace, in unmerited favor, which the Holy Spirit pours upon us, we receive more. Which what we don't deserve. The good things that we receive. We don't deserve it. It's like receiving a birthday present. When it's not your birthday. Or reward. When you haven't done much. And basically that's. Grace. Salvation. Um, being called a child of God. Being a heir of his kingdom. <clears throat> Favor, unmerited favor that we don't deserve. Um, to rule with Christ, to be called a priest, to be called a king, a queen in his kingdom. We don't deserve that. And yet we receive it. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Spirit of grace. Uh, we can also see the spirit of knowledge. <clears throat> we see that in Isaiah 11 verse 2. Uh, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Knowledge. Isaiah 11 uses the word the Spirit of Knowledge. What, knowledge means to know things. He's also called the, the Spirit of Wisdom. Wisdom is application and understanding to comprehend things. So those are names of the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of Wisdom. If, if you want application in your life, you trust the Holy Spirit. Because many times people have knowledge of things. It's good because the Holy Spirit also gives you knowledge to know things. But how are you going to apply those things in your life? You need the Holy Spirit to help you in there too. Because He is the Spirit of Wisdom. The Spirit of Application. <clears throat> All oh, brothers and sisters, 
I'm dealing with a situation. I don't know what to do. Oh, there is the Holy Spirit to apply the word of God in your heart so you can know what to do and how to do it. <clears throat> and you cannot just know things about God, but live according to God's word through the Holy Spirit. And that's awesome. If you don't know how to deal with a situation, he's there. He's there telling you, hey, maybe you should do this. It, it, it's better for you to do this. And then you do it and everything comes out good. Because why? Because you listen to the Spirit. And when things don't come out that good, you know why? Because he was disobedient to the Spirit. Let's play another song. Verdict was guilty. Case closed. The end. No chance for me to ever leave this prison of my sin. Now I know it might sound crazy, but one day a key unlocked that cell. I heard a small voice say, Your debt's been paid by somebody else. And now I'm walking, walking. Nothing perfect I still stumble every single day I still get knocked down But the difference now Is that's not where I stay Cause I got a savior Who knows everywhere I've been And he's telling me up ahead cause there is a savior who knows everywhere you've been and he's telling you that you never have to go back there again so if you know that you Let's look at another name, the Spirit of Truth, John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Spirit of Truth. John 15, verse 26 says this, When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. But who is Jesus? Jesus is the truth. You know, we have the Holy Spirit 
um, who, who teaches us the truth about Jesus in our daily walk. Because he is also truth. He is the true God as well, along with the Father. Brothers and sisters, we, we know the truth from falsehood through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit as well. Um, the Spirit of Truth, He teaches us what is true. You know, this world has this philosophy of this is my truth and this is your truth. No. <clears throat> There's only one truth and that is Jesus. And the Spirit of Truth leads us to the real truth, which is Jesus. Truth is not something that is opinion. Truth is a reality against falsehood. It's not just a person's opinion. Nowadays, um, this could be true for me, and this could be false for you. Or, but it's my truth. No, it's not an option. Truth is what it is. Truth never changes. Because the truth is summed up in who God is. And we also have the name, the spirit of life in, in Romans 8 verse 2. Another name for the Holy Spirit, spirit of life. Romans 8 verse 2 says this. <clears throat> The spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Spirit of life. The Holy Spirit is life-giving, spiritual life. Just as our biological life requires breath and breathing, we need God's spirit, his breath, to truly live. The, the Holy Spirit is the giver of that life, which is Jesus. Because Jesus is the life. Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And who gives us Jesus? But the Holy Spirit gives us Jesus. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of li the Living God. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 3. Let's go 2 Corinthians 3, verse 3. <clears throat> it says this. You show that you are a letter from... Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Our God is living, is not of statue, is not of a stone, it is the Spirit of the living God. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the living God, a God that is living, not a God of, of falsehood. In Revelation 19, verse 10, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Prophecy. In Ephesians 1, 17, the Spirit of Revelation. In Matthew 10, verse 20, the Spirit of the Father. In Isaiah 11, verse 2, the Spirit of the Fear of the Lord. In Acts 5, verse 9, the Spirit of the Lord God. In Galatians 4, verse 6, the Spirit of the Son. And in Matthew 4, 1, Spirit. You'll see this in John 3, 6 and 1 Timothy 4, 1, Spirit. We're rushing a little bit on the names of God, of names of the Holy Spirit, because um, there's, there's lots of things that we can continue, but we have to rush on this a little bit because of the time for the podcast <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is also called the counselor the comforter the part 
paraclete, the paraclete in Greek, counselor, comforter, our lawyer. This is what it means for to for him to be our counselor, our comforter. Paraclete is a term used in law. <clears throat> this is in 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 in. <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. This is a term used in John 14, verse 16, 26, and John 15, 26, counselor. And in Romans 8, 26, the paraclete. He is our counselor. He is the one who counsels us, consoles us, but he defends us. John 14, 16, 14, 26, and 15, 26. The paraclete, the counselor, um, he defends our case before God and before man. The paraclete, he stands alongside of you. You know, Jesus defended the apostles when he was with them. He was defending them constantly. People were, the, the Pharisees and the scribes and, and the law um doctors and and so forth they they were going and they were they were attacking the disciples while Jesus was with them and Jesus defended them and Jesus knew what to say to defend them but Jesus was taken out of their midst but who was left to defend them now it was the paraclete the holy spirit it was the Holy Spirit there to defend the apostles when Jesus was not around. Jesus said this in John 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor, a paraclete, to be with you forever. He will give you another defender, someone to defend you. And that was the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit who defends us when we need him. He's there. Let's go to another song.
forget who you are and what you've done for us What you've done for us Though the world sees and soon forgets We will not forget who you are and what you've done for us What you've done for us Though the world sees and soon forgets In Hebrews 9, verse 14, the Holy Spirit is called the internal spirit. Hebrews 9, verse 14, which shows he's on he's timeless. He's not limited by time. Hebrews 9, verse 14 says this. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. He's a timeless spirit. He's limited. He's unlimited. Um, he's unlimited in time. He's internal, timeless. Psalms 51 verse 12. We see free spirit. The Holy Spirit is a generous and willing spirit. In Acts 5 verse 3 or 4. We see the Holy Spirit is God. Because what does Peter says? You do not lie to men, but you lie to God in reference to the Holy Spirit. Nehemiah 9 verse 20 and Psalms 143 verse 10. The Holy Spirit is called the good spirit. He is good. God's good spirit will teach and lead us to all that is good. And then we, we got the name Holy Spirit, which is where we mostly know the Spirit of God by that name, Holy Spirit. Psalms 51, verse 11. I believe that's where we first hear the words Holy Spirit. Um, in Luke 11, verse 13. Ephesians 1, 13 and 4, 30. The Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit. But we also see in in Matthew 28, um, I believe it's 19, uh, where the command is given to go baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, verse, yes, verse 19. What does holy mean? It means separated for a purpose and a cause. That's what holy means. God's Spirit 
And that is the Holy Spirit. He's holy. He's the spirit of holiness. He separates us. If you if you have the old translation, um, like King James and stuff, they use the word Holy Ghost, um, which has kind of a negative side to it. But spirit is better. But the the word Holy it distinguishes the the spirit from evil spirits. It separates them from what's evil. And he's also called Holy Spirit because he also separates us. He also sanctifies us. He says a part for a purpose and for a cause. We could speak about that in another program, which we will. In 2 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, the Holy Spirit is called Lord. In Luke 1, 35, the power of the highest. In Romans 8, 15, the spirit of adoption. In Isaiah 4, verse 4, the spirit of burning and the spirit of judgment. In Romans 8, verse 9, the spirit of Christ. In 1 Peter 4, verse 14, the spirit of glory. And with this, we'll finish the study, but we'll continue the podcast, of course, because we still got our uh, Bible trivia and other stuff. Let's go to another song before our Bible trivia and Bible t- reading time.
to our Bible trivia, let's listen to the Bible theme. Question, 
whose herdsmen fought with Lot's herdsmen? Was it Simon, Abram, Isaac, or Mark? And the answer is, it was Abram's. You see this in Genesis 13, verse 7. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the Perites dwelt then in the land. Next question. Which one of the following is not one of Jacob's son? Joseph, Nephtali, Daniel, or Zebedun? Which one of the following is not one of Jacob's son? sons? Was it Joseph, Nephtali, Daniel, or Zebedun? And the answer is Daniel. Daniel is now among the lists. Next question. Who stopped Abraham from slaying his son? Uh, was it the angel of the Lord? Was it Abraham's servant? Or was it Abraham stopped himself? And the answer is, it was the angel of the Lord. Genesis 22, 11 and 12 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And these are the questions for the Bible trivia in today's program. Let's go to the Bible and we're in Leviticus chapter 3 in our Bible reading fellowship. Chapter 3 And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons the priests shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation." And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat thereof and the whole rump it shall he take off hard by the backbone. And the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savour. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Let's go to a song now. This year's felt like four seasons of winter And you'd give anything to feel the sun 
Always reaching, always climbing, always second guessing the timing. But God has a plan, a purpose in this. You are His child, and don't you forget. He put that hunger in your heart. He put that fire in your soul. His love is the to go to our New Testament Bible Reading Fellowship, and it's we are in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priest, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus— there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, By what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, Are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, The stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, 
God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They ask each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign. And everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago, by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them, because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to one more song before we end in prayer. I 
Jesus, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for this podcast, that every word that was said, Lord God, may touch someone's life intimately, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Lord God, if there's someone that's sick, Lord God, may they have healing. If someone, Lord God, is not edified, Lord God, may they be edified by this podcast, Lord God, and may, Lord God, the words that are said, Lord God, in this podcast may... Lord God, make us doers of the word, and not just those who hear the word, Lord God. Make us those who who do what your word says. And Lord God, we pray for your blessing upon everyone, Lord God, in this who hears this podcast. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the Church of God says, Amen. Let's listen to a little bit to a, another song before we end completely.
Throw 